bad games are not always the worst thing in the world. Sometimes they have something that you just can't get anywhere else. That doesn't make them good, but it does make them noteworthy. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the most unique bad games. Starting off with number 10, it's Quantum Error. 2023 was a gaming year of incredibly high highs and abysmally low lows. In any other year, a game like Quantum Era would have been talked about as the bad game. But it's almost been completely overshadowed by, you know, everything else. There's one reason and one reason only this game was mostly skipped over. It's the price tag. It's a console exclusive and it's 60 friggin' dollars. You gotta applaud the ambition here. They seem to think this is a premium experience that's worth that kind of price tag, and it's not. What makes the game stand out from your standard first person horror game is your main guy's profession. Instead of just being a cop or like some random survivor, you are a firefighter. That's not just the background either. There's large sections of the game where you're running around putting out fires. Now, there have been firefighter games before. Um, the Sega Saturn brought us one by Sonic Team, which is actually a game that deserves a little bit more attention than it got, but it was on the Sega Saturn, so that explains that. Uh, it did not try to combine that gameplay with a survival horror game, and that's what Quantum Error does. It's actually pretty wildly ambitious, uh, especially coming from such a small development team, but uh, that's also the problem. It was too ambitious for their own good. It just didn't work. Honestly, a lot of good ideas, just it didn't manage to land, you know? And if this was like 25, 30 bucks, I also think people would have been a lot kinder about it. At number nine is The Quiet Man. This Square Enix published action game is so bizarre and mystifying. We've talked about it plenty already, but I still, I, I can't wrap my head around it. I mean, the gameplay, it's straightforward enough. It's a rock stupid beat em up that makes Final Fight look complex, but the actual action is kind of few and far between. The real meat of the game is in the uh, cutscenes, which are long and also uh, completely without sound. You could say for this man, they're very, Quiet? Yeah, that's the game's gimmick. You play as a guy who's deaf, but nothing about it makes any sense. And I'm not just talking about the story, which is nonsensical, sure, but the basic gimmick of the game doesn't add up. Why are these extended scenes muted even when your main guy isn't there? You'd think if they're trying to tell a story about somebody who's deaf, uh, they'd build a story around that, but they don't. They don't. The no sound gimmick? It seems like it was added late in development because it's, it's very confusing. Like, it's not a consistent thing. It's very awkward. And you can just play through the whole story with the sound on anyway. It doesn't make it any better. Uh, actually, it makes it worse to know what's going on. Whatever story you come up with in your head is, I think, better than what's actually meant to be going on. It's, it's stupid. It's a game that was made by veteran developers, so there's not really any excuse for the badness this time. There were a lot of talented people at making this thing, and they clearly got some money put into it, but it's just terrible. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's anything else quite like it, but that's not always a good thing, is it? And number eight is Metal Gear Survive. Ah, this. Like, what do you get when a desperate publisher tries to recoup costs on an expensive game engine, but doesn't want to put in a lot of time or effort? You get something that's both extremely derivative and also weirdly unique, which sounds like a contradiction, but follow along with me here. The basic idea of Metal Gear Survive is to rip off survival games using Metal Gear Solid 5 as a template, which automatically makes it very weird. This is a Metal Gear game where you play as a nameless soldier who's transported into an alternate reality where you have to fight off zombies who have crystals for heads in a strange purple fog filled version of environments from the original game. The half-baked attempt at a story, the weird online only survival game stuff the bizarre alien monsters you encounter later in the game all combined with metal gear make for something that is just not like anything else not good mind you but not like anything else <laughs> Like, they could have just made, like, an Undead Nightmare-style expansion and called it a day, but for whatever reason, the developers got more ambitious, at least 
for the first stretch of development, the idea stretch, and then um, somewhere along the line lost that ambition or the ability to execute on it. Honestly, it would have been better just as an expansion, I think. But in some ways, I do respect them for trying to do something different. Even the game was dead in the water from the start. Nobody wants a zombie survival Metal Gear game. That's, that's not what anybody's here for. And number seven is Balan Wonderworld. Um, if you take a glance at the game, you think it's some generic platformer, and to a certain extent, yeah, but it's also very, very weird. And I'm not just talking about the aesthetics, which are weird, but um, I mean, if you've seen Nights before, Nights into Dreams, you're kind of like, all right, yeah, I get it. And there's a reason for that. Uh, but it's not just that. It has this really bizarre and unpleasant one-button control scheme, super awkward cutscenes, and these really repetitive QTE minigames that are boring and frustrating at the very same time. Pretty much the whole game the whole way through is like that. And it feels like it was made by an alien. But it wasn't made by an alien. It was made by disgraced Sonic co-creator Yuji Naka. I said Nights into Dreams. You know, uh, yeah, this guy. He's the Nights into Dreams guy. Uh, and Sonic the Hedgehog, Nights into Dreams. I mentioned Burning Rangers. He was the producer on that game. At one point in time, he was regarded as a, a really important and well-accomplished game creator. Somebody who was kind of regarded as Sega's answer to Shigeru Miyamoto. Um, but, you, I mean, if you play this game, the, the, the weirdest thing in it by far has got to be the Island of Thames, this hub world that can be completely ignored if you want, but there's this elaborate side game where you can raise and breed these critters called Thames, and the whole thing is extremely in-depth and complex, it's pretty wild, because none of it matters. It's like if you took the Chow thing from Sonic Adventure, but, like, made it really complicated and have no real reason, like, the Chow's integrated with the Dreamcast VMU and actually made a kind of cool little virtual pet thing, which virtual pets were all the rage at the time, but just without any context whatsoever, chalked into a really strange, badly designed platformer. It just, it does not work. Nothing works. This is not a good game, but it is, I mean, so far out of left field, it's hard to even describe. And number six is Of Bird and Cage. The idea of an interactive music album is a good one, and it's been done well before with something like Sayonara Wild Hearts. But I mean, this is called Of Bird and Cage. Probably one of the most pretentious names I've ever heard. The name is embarrassing, uh, but you know, if the game was good, the name would probably not matter. The game, however, is also embarrassing. Hey. Yes? Is open mic on tonight? Let me guess. Pretty little girl thinks she's some um, up-and-coming talent and singing in a shitty dive bar somehow gets her discovered. This isn't Star Search. You're in the wrong place. It was just a question. Sorry to bother you. It's really easy to forget what they're trying to go for when all the dialogue is this bad and embarrassing. And that's just the start of it. The game tries to tell a dark, edgy story and just falls flat on its face time and time again. Like the cutscene direction is amateurish. It's all around just a bad game that somehow managed to rope a lot of talented artists into contributing. You'd never notice unless you really paid attention though. The whole musical gimmick is barely even part of the game. Someone was clearly trying with this one, but it wasn't the people who were bringing Bringing everything together because it is an incoherent mess that is embarrassing to actually play. At number five is Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood, an action stealth game set in the world of darkness, and you get to play as a werewolf? Well, sign me up. That could that could be a pretty interesting game. Uh, except it's not. Oh, it is not. There are some good ideas. I, I like how there's a distinct gameplay difference between the normal human stuff and the parts where you're a werewolf, but it's not fun. The stealth is janky and not in an amusing way. The combat is floaty and the story is incoherent. Instead of just leaning into the interesting parts of the setting, you're mostly sneaking around doing a bunch of, like, fighting of soldiers in tech bases. They throw a lot of proper nouns at you to make sure that you know, yes, this is set in the world of darkness. But the actual levels and enemies are, uh, they could be in any world. I mean, it technically has to be dark in a lot of it, but eh, that's more of the physics of light than it is the fictional universe it takes place in. Maybe if the gameplay was more fun, it probably could have been something, but it's not. It's all too floaty to be a proper action game. The stealth just, oh, it sucks. Send more men!
And number four is Bad Day L.A., a title that for whatever reason reminds me of the movie title Baby's Day Out. I don't know why it just comes to mind. It doesn't have anything to do with the movie. But the concept of this one actually kind of not bad. A comedy action game set during a particularly bad day in Los Angeles could be a lot of fun. I mean, if the writing was solid and the gameplay was good. But uh, guess which two things Bad Day L.A. doesn't have. This game sucks. Like, you know how South Park is great at topical humor, but like people who want to be South Park are terrible at topical humor? That's the that's the kind of topical humor that's in this game. Listen, people, I have an announcement to make. If you don't want to see any mud, but you best close your eyes. And it was dated in 2006. Um, not looking very good in 2024 at this point. Uh, awkward. Very ugly. And it also tanked American McGee's career. Uh, this is a guy who worked on Doom 2. Like, he's an industry legend that was behind the actually good Alice games, but his name was plastered all over Bad Day LA, and it was probably one of the most embarrassing failures I've ever seen. The game isn't bad, per se. I mean, it is overall a bad game, but it's more of a pathetic problem. Like, even for broken people, People who love terrible games like me it is tough like it's abrasive to all of the senses and it doesn't play well And number three is Left Alive. Um, this is a really ambitious game that was meant to mix Metal Gear Solid survival mechanics and a narrative that had three distinct characters um, into a story in the Front Mission universe, which there's giant robots you can steal and pilot. It's all set within a somber narrative about the horrors of war. Sounds good on paper, but the thing does not work. It's, it's, it's pretty disastrous, actually. It also, it just feels unfinished, you know? I don't know what it is about Square Enix and some of their games, but you get these clearly expensive, ambitious projects with a lot of unique ideas, but they come out and nothing at all makes sense about them. Like, Let's Alive is a game filled with empty environments, awkward controls, and weird stapled on gameplay systems that just, they don't, they don't mesh at all. They don't fit together. Also, there's stealth, and it's frustrating as hell. Caution, the enemy is approaching. <laughs> The character models are nice, and it seems like they put some money into this thing during the cutscenes. And then you look around at the environment, some parts look like a slightly upscaled PlayStation 1, maybe PlayStation 2 game. Like a Metal Gear Solid type game set in a war torn city with giant mechs all over sounds awesome, but Left Alive ain't that. It's got such a cool, unique setting, and it's just wasted. Full status check. Legs are badly damaged and unable to function. What about the weapons? Tell me I can use those at least. Shoulder weapons returning an error. Only the right hand weapon is functional. And number two is Jurassic Park Trespasser. This 1998 action-adventure game from EA was one of the most ambitious games of its time. The game was trying to be an immersive experience where you had to survive on an island with realistic physics and a truly intelligent set of dinosaurs with their own unique behaviors. It was meant to be this incredible sandbox survival experience with top-of-the-line production values, and almost none of that can be seen in the final product, which is a buggy, clearly incomplete mess. Um, but even after all of the compromises and failures, it's still one of the most unique games out there. It is so obviously nothing like what they wanted it to be, but that doesn't mean it's not really original. The uh, focus on exploration and physics puzzles mixed with the weird one-handed controls make for an experience that it, it doesn't feel like anything else out there. That doesn't mean it feels correct. Uh, like, there's things about this that feel uniquely off. But then there's also the fact that all of these systems are physics-based, and honestly, they're cool as hell. But they also don't work right. So when you're sitting there admiring them sometimes, it just becomes hilariously bad. What's especially odd about this game, though, is the story. You've got this running narration from Richard Attenborough as John Hammond that's actually pretty good. Uh, and it's all in service of this totally buggy, broken game. They even got Minnie Driver to voice the main character who puts in a good performance. Engine. Some kind of... Wait. International Genetic Technologies. That was the company from the dinosaur trial. It gives the game this sense of dignity that is immediately squandered when 
you realize that you have to look down at your polygon boobs to check your health. Yeah, that is that is the opposite of dignity. It's this mix of juvenile nonsense and austere ambition that makes Jurassic Park Trespasser such a weird and mostly bad experience. And finally, speaking of juvenile nonsense, Michigan report from hell. How do you even describe that? I mean, this is a game, kind of, where you play as a cameraman in the middle of a strange incident in Chicago. Oh, by the way, you don't actually go to Michigan, despite the name of the game being Michigan. Michigan report from hell. All you do is walk around and film stuff while the quote-unquote story plays out. Uh, depending on what you're looking at, you'll get points for suspense, uh, immoral, erotic, most of which don't make any sense. They they seem to kind of happen at random. Honestly, the gameplay is so basic, it's hard to even describe it as a game. There are some rudimentary puzzles, uh, extremely, extremely rudimentary puzzles. Sometimes you can respond to questions, and sometimes you get a choice whether the reporter lives or dies, uh, who always inexplicably gets replaced by another one in the next scene with no explanation of how they managed to get there, but that's it. Playing as a cameraman during some kind of crisis actually sounds like a very interesting idea for a game, but it seems like they kind of forgot the game part. There's very little you ever actually do, and even then, half the time, it doesn't matter anyway. Most of the game, you're just sitting there with an extremely cheesy and stupid story um, happening in front of you. Probably the most noteworthy thing about the game is that it was made by Grasshopper Manufacturer, which is uh, Suda51's company, the guys behind No More Heroes and Lollipop Chainsaw. Uh, Suda was only a producer on this game. He actually didn't make it, but it's still kind of a black mark on his reputation. Um, maybe rightfully so too it's a unique game got a unique idea but uh it's one of the dumbest things i've ever played and that's saying uh something we we go through a lot of dumb crap here if you haven't noticed um there's a monster right in front of us it's not moving i bet it would if we got too close but that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.